Damn it! It's pee pee time. Penis! Holy moly, stromboli, guacamole. That's right, Eagles fans. You read the title right. Today I'll be taking a look at a harem fantasy that doesn't make me want to take a bath with my toaster. So one day I was randomly scrolling through my mal account and noticed this fairly new fantasy harem called The Legendary Hero Is Dead. At first I thought, God damn it, I can't wait to waste another five hours of my life watching yet another boring and generic fantasy harem. The main character will be dislikable and overpowered, meaning that there's no stakes, which also means that nothing in the show matters at all. The characters will suck, the world will be bland, it'll be unfunny, and I'll get little to no enjoyment out of it. Hit or miss. But after watching it, I ended up being pleasantly surprised. The show exceeded my extremely low low expectations and I'd even go as far as to call it decent. So because of that, if you do have an interest in fantasy harms and haven't watched this yet, then I recommend doing so. Anyway, spoilers for the anime. Continue at your own frisket rain. <laughs> So, we get introduced to our main character, Toka, who's a- Look at me, daddy, I'm a He also has a stocking fetish, which is weird, but then again with my fetishes, who am I to talk? Anyway, Toka lives with his bulbalicious lady friend, Yuna, where they need to survive in a world that's filled with evil devils that want to kill all humans. Luckily for them, there's a legendary hero named Sion that's been going around killing them for the past three years. One day, he shows up to Toka's village, saves them from a devil, but then... I love grilled meat. I know this will hit the... <laughs> yep, as the title says, the legendary hero... is dead. <laughs> the next day. Toka wakes up in the hero's dead body because a necromancer named Henri put his soul in it. She then forces him to take Sion's place as the legendary hero, otherwise she'll destroy his soul, meaning that he'll- So that's what he does. He, Henri, and Yuna set off on an adventure to save the world. It's basically your average fantasy story, although that isn't inherently a bad thing. Even though the goal along with other aspects are very simple and cliche, the show isn't generic or boring by any means. For example, as mentioned, there are three main groups of beings in the show, which are humans, necromancers, and devils. The necromancers are people that can control dead bodies, and the devils are big, strong, evil monsters. Now, there are definitely fantasy and isekais that have necromancers in them. However, I don't believe most of them play a huge role like they do here. Necromancy is used throughout the entire show. There's undead armies and people possessing other people's bodies, even if they're dead. So yeah, while this isn't isn't anything new or groundbreaking, it's used so much that it helps set this apart from other fantasy harms as well as isekais. I'm a fire in my laser! <laughs> Now as for the devils, they're pretty bland and standard. They're big evil monsters, and that's about it. While they are one of the weakest aspects of the show, they still aren't bad because they're strong and actually very threatening. That's right, unlike a bunch of other garbage I've gone over, this show has actual sirloin steaks. Both the necromancers and devils are super strong, which means again, there are actual stakes during the fights. And as for the fights, they're not half bad either. They aren't great, but all of them are at the very least decent and kept my interest from start to finish. None of them overstay their welcome, and the way Toka and everyone win is always interesting and clever. Now, if you've never seen the show before, then you might be wondering, wait, if Toka is in the legendary hero's body, then shouldn't he be extremely overpowered? And the answer to that is no. Because even though Toka is in the hero's body, he can't use the hero's ridiculous amount of mana. The only notable thing Toka gained from the hero was his legendary sword, but even then, it's not like he can use it properly. He can wield the sword, but again, he isn't able to gain super strength from it because his own mana is so weak. That being said, Toka can still manipulate and change the sword into pretty much whatever he wants. He can create giant walls, tie people up with it, and do other stuff too. <laughs> now this does seem broken, but surprisingly it somehow isn't. Toka also always wins, not because he has a magical sword, but because he outsmarts his opponents and lays them in traps. He uses strategy to win, which is why his victories always feel earned and why all the fights end up being decently fun to watch. 
The anime is divided into multiple arcs that last for two to three episodes. All of them are at the very least decent, which is impressive. Even though I do enjoy the show, I'm surprised that there isn't one arc or multiple episodes that are notably better or worse than others. Consistency is not easy to achieve, and it's something a fair amount of shows struggle with at times. Sometimes there's minor inconsistencies, such as in a show like Temple, which is overall decent, but does have some mediocre episodes. There's also major inconsistencies, such as in Testament of Sister New Devil, where half of it is really good, but the other half is sort of... So yeah, the legendary hero is consistent, even if it's only consistently decent. One reason for that is because all the arcs are distinct and interesting in their own unique way. For example, the first arc has Toka fight against some asshole who used to fight alongside the hero Sion. Toka learns how to use his sword, he outsmarts the blonde bastard, and then wins. It's simple, but it works. In the next arc, Sion's body becomes decomposed, so now Toka is a skeleton for most of the arc. Visually, it's different, but it also also has major impacts on the story too. After that, Toka takes over Yuna's body and later fights a devil inside his own memories, which is pretty cool too. <laughs> Besides that, there's not much else to say that I haven't already said. The show is consistent, there's some fun ideas in every arc, there's actual stakes, and the fights aren't half bad either. So because of that, I guess I'll talk about the last arc. Everybody do the flop! In it, Toka and everyone fight one of the evil necromancers. The asshole Kyle and even the hero Sion come back to help, which I'm sorta of mixed on. It's kinda dumb to find out that Sion isn't technically dead, since his soul lives inside the sword now. Also, he can now take over Toka's body, which is cool, but also admittedly kinda broken too. He can only fight in it if Toka has enough mana, and even then he's not a full strength either, so it's not bad at all. Plus, we get to see him interact with others like Toka and Kyle, which which is cool too. If I am looking for other things to criticize, I will say that the fight does drag on for a tiny bit. But again, I'm just looking for stuff to nitpick at this point. The fight is overall fine. There's some very minor annoyances with it, but there's also some neat things in it too. Anyway, Sion and Kyle join Toka's party, and now they're off to help Toka raise his mana level. Overall, it's not a bad way to end the season. It's not a masterpiece like season 1's finale in Heaven's Lost Property, but it's not majorly disappointing either. It's not a great way to end the anime, but it's a good way to end the season. <laughs> the anime's cast is... Okay. All the main characters are fine, and even some of the side characters aren't half bad either. As always, let's start with its main character, Toka. Thankfully, Toka is actually good, and easily one of the best characters in the show. He's an asshole, especially in the beginning, but most importantly, he's also a pervert. He has a stocking fetish, which is sometimes funny, although it does get old too. Now, I love perverted humor. That's why Tomoki is my second favorite anime character of all time. However, the reason and Tomoki works so well is that although he's constantly perverted, he's always perverted in new and different ways. He watches people fuck out in the open, he makes egg omelets that look like boobs, and he also shows off his dick to a bunch of girls calling it the Tomoki Tower. And by the way, all three of these examples are used during the same episode too. They're all perverted jokes, but they're all different and funny for different reasons, which is why they work so well. With Toka, his stocking jokes land about half the time. Some Sometimes they're used in new and funny ways, but other times it's just boring and repetitive. You got new legs. Some of the side characters are alright too. There's Sion who's fun, even though he's only in the first and last episode. There's you and his papa who's a big pervert, so obviously I'm going to enjoy him. There's even this one red-headed guy who's basically the Yamcha in the show. He acts all cool, but he sucks big black monkey balls. <laughs> There's also its villains who are sorta of mixed too. A lot of the devils are pretty forgettable. The only one I remember is the one who enters people's memories as well as the queen since she has big bazongas. There's this one necromancer who has a bone fetish and wants to skin one of the main girls alive, so that's hashtag weird. However, none of these compare to Kyle, the first and by far best antagonist of the series. He's a giant asshole who wants to take over Sion's body because he's an obsessed crazy loon Tunes lunatic. He's funny, he's strong, and he's a dick. That's good enough for me. I was excited to see him come back in the last episode, and I wish we got to see more of him, but I guess we'll just have to wait for season poo. Anyway, now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for the waifu wars, where I officially rank each girl from worst to breast. It's coming in the chum bucket time. <laughs> 
Number four. Yuna's the main heroine of the series, but unfortunately, she's also the worst. She's known Toka ever since they were kids, and of course, wants to suck his peppermint patty. The reason Yuna's worst girl is because she's sort of a bitch. She yells at Toka a lot and is very mean to him, but then again, he's an asshole and a pervert, so he sort of deserves it. Number three. Millie is Yuna's sister, and she's an adventurer that goes around killing devils. She doesn't do much, but she's nice to Toka and wants to marry him, so that's good enough for me. Hopefully she does more in season two. Number two. Honori is a necromancer that put Toka's soul inside Sion's body. She's a lowly hentai girl that's super strong, and she also wants to fuck Toka when she gets older. She's good, but there's just one gal pal that's ever so slightly better. <laughs> One. Marguerite is best girl, and that's because she's cute, she's quirky, and she also satisfies my expansion fetish. <laughs> the anime was animated by Liden Films, and it doesn't look that good. It's not bad or anything, it's passable, but clearly not impressive at all. It's by far the weakest aspect of the show, but again, it's inoffensive. Character designs are fine, animation isn't bad, it's just whatever. <laughs> The soundtrack wasn't on YouTube for me to re-listen to, so I'm just gonna say that it's forgettable. At least its opening is decent, and its ending is actually pretty good too. What a pain in the ass! Its English dub, on the other hand, is surprisingly solid. It's not one of the greatest dubs of all time, but everyone does a pretty good job. I'm sure if the dub was mediocre or just okay, I wouldn't have enjoyed the series nearly as much as I did. <laughs> Well, that was The Legend 27 is Dead, and it was Okay! It's consistent, its cast isn't half bad, its premise is interesting, and overall it's just a decent show. I really don't understand why it's rated so low on Mal, especially when other garbage is ranked so much higher than it. <laughs> maybe people are just dumb, or maybe they're racist, or maybe they're both dumb and racist. Anyway, I give I Am Legend a light recommendation, which which is why I'm giving it a 6.61 out of 10. Well, that was the anime, but because I'm a loser and don't have a life, I'll be taking a look at the manga. I'm hoping it'll be decent like the anime, but there's only one way to find out. Holy fuck, Stewie, I'm shitting. Well, I read the manga, and overall it was pretty good. Just like the anime, I will be spoiling everything, so if you want to read it, then I recommend pausing the video and doing that first. If you want to pick up from where the anime ended, then start at chapter 64. The first 63 chapters are literally just the anime, so you can skip them and you won't be missing anything. And because they're the exact same, I really don't have anything to say about them. The art is a bit rough in the beginning chapters, but it does improve quickly. If you compare some of the early chapters to some of the later ones, you can see a notable improvement. It's not just the art that gets better, but so does the writing too. So I guess that's a good segue into talking about everything past the anime, so again, here's your last spoiler warning. <laughs> After chapter 63, the manga is divided into four main arcs, the first of which is the Sageland arc, which is only 20 chapters. I say only 20 because the next two arcs are twice as long as this. Anyway, as for the Sageland arc, it's pretty good, and it's easily the best arc of the series up to this point. Everyone goes on an island and trains to become stronger. Toka raises his mana level, Margaret gets a cool new ability, and most of all we find out that Yuna has been a witch this entire time. This means that she's super duper strong and can punch people really hard, so that's spicy goodness. There's some more world building, and of course there's also a lot of fights too, which are all really good. Just like everything else in this arc, they're a notable improvement compared to a lot of the previous fights. They're all interesting, well written, and fun. They aren't amazing or anything, but still, I was surprised to enjoy them as much as I did. One of if not the best thing to come from this arc is Kyle. He returned in the last arc, but he didn't do too much in it. However, here Kyle gets a decent amount of screen time and he gets to show off his skills in multiple fights. After reading the manga in its entirety, I can't imagine myself enjoying it as much as I did if Kyle didn't come back. He's my favorite character and I have way too much fun seeing him dick around and showing off. He's basically the series Vegeta. He's a super strong asshole that doesn't like the main character, but can't live without him. <laughs> 
Anyway, one last thing we got from this arc was its villain Diana. She's a necromancer that's super strong, and if you look at her breasts, you'll turn to stone. She's a fun villain, but she becomes leagues better once Toka defeats her and she falls madly in love with him. She's the last girl that gets added to Toka's harem as well as his main party. Diana is really good. In fact, she's better than Margaret and is breast girl. <laughs> Next up is the Arad arc, which is also pretty good and is the series longest arc, totaling at 50 chapters. Toka and the gang finally manage to reach Hell's Gate and want to seal it, but when they get there, they find out something insane. It turns out that for the past thousand years, the entire world has been ruled by multiple necromancers. These necromancers have been feeding off the souls of regular people and killing them in order to live forever, and it turns out that this isn't the first time someone's found out about this either. For the past thousand years, there have been many heroes like Sion who have learned this, yet they haven't been able to do anything about this. Either they give up and let the necromancers rule the world and continue enjoying their lives, or they try to fight them but end up- <laughs> Now this sounds crazy, and that's because it definitely is. However, I haven't even revealed the best part yet. One of those necromancers, or actually the leader and strongest of them, is none other than Margaret's father. <laughs> This reveal is insane. This is literally just the basement scene again from Attack on Titan. So much of what we've known and believed in the series so far has been a lie, and now our entire perspective of its world has changed. One of, if not, then definitely now, the strongest character in the series is evil and has just turned into the series' main villain. I was losing my shit when I first read this. I did not expect to get this excited and shocked over something in the series where it's the main character character constantly ejaculates over seeing a pair of thighs. There are some great moments in the series, but this is where the manga peaks. Nothing ever topped this moment because again, this is so surprising and it works so well. Anyway, besides that, there's not much else to say about this arc and even its next arc, the Necromancy War arc. Both are pretty good and are so because of the same reasons I mentioned in the Sageland arc. The battles are mostly solid, we get to see more from Kyle and Diana, plus the art is good too. Now although these two arcs are pretty good, I do have some minor annoyances. In the Holy Sword, it's revealed that there's this goddess named Famria who decides to help Toka out. She raises his mana level up to level 10, which is the highest any human can go. So it's pretty dumb that Toka got a power boost like this out of nowhere and didn't really go through anything to earn it. Shortly after this, Yuna confesses to Toka, although he's too stupid and doesn't realize she's confessing to him. That's annoying, but it's nothing awful. It's just sort of frustrating. Ethel loses her left arm, but then she just so happens to steal the Demon Lord's left arm, which is way too convenient. There's also some fights in the Necromancy War arc that drag on for a bit and overstay their welcome. It's still nothing bad by any means, but I was losing interest in them on occasions. That being said, although there are some complaints I have with the Necromancy War arc, it's still the second best arc in the series. <laughs> This then leads us into the final arc, where Toka and everyone go up against Margaret's father. Unfortunately, this arc is the weakest of the four manga-only arcs, but it's still decent. Up until now, the series has been pretty consistent in terms of quality, but sadly, this is where that streak ends. There are some really good moments and fights here, such as when Margaret goes up against Isaac. It's revealed that he's one of the necromancers that's been alive for a thousand years and is working for her father, called Mr. Poopy Butthole. She fights him, realizes that he's not actually evil, and then he joins them to defeat Poopy Butthole. Now I like seeing antagonists, especially ones as strong as Isaac, change sides and help the heroes. However, this is like the 10th time the series has done this. Literally every villain in the series has switched sides and has joined Toka's side, which is really stupid. Even Diego, the bad guy from the season 1 finale, comes back, is still evil, but then helps Toka because My name is Jeff. it's really stupid and it gives me fairy tale vibes which makes me want to vomit. Oh, I fucking hate fairy tale.
Another thing that grinds my gears is that pretty much no one important dies in the series. Obviously, Sion dies in the first chapter, and plenty of civilians die in the last two arcs too. But as for main or even side characters, no one except for Anri's brother dies. I was expecting Toka's master Ethel or Isaac or someone else to die, but no, none of them did. I'm not saying you need characters to die for a story to be good, but when you have a war arc, you need characters characters to die. It's a fucking war. People die in wars and people die when they are killed. <laughs> Another problem with this arc are the fights. While some are good, there's some that either drag on or just aren't good at all. Fights used to be all about strategy and character skills, but now some of them have turned into mindless power ones. Again, not all, but some have turned into Dragon Ball-like fights. They consist of characters shooting powerful beams at each other, which is dumb and not very interesting. None of them were a chore to read through, but it's clear that as a whole, this arc has notably weaker fights. Also, around the time we learn about Margaret's father being evil, we also find out that the red-headed Yamcha named Blake isn't actually a wimp. He used to be the strongest character in the series, however, he now has amnesia, which is why he sucks at fighting. I figured he'd somehow get his memories back and be extremely overpowered and fuck everyone up, but no, that didn't happen. It's weird, because the series constantly constantly brings him up and mentions him too. It would have been super cool to see him fight, and I was really looking forward to it, but the author said, <laughs> No. Finally, and definitely my biggest complaint with this arc is the introduction of aliens. Yeah, so it turns out that aliens now exist in the series because why not? They don't exist in the same world Toka is living in, but instead they live in a different dimension or something. Even for a series with a dumb premise, this is really, really stupid and not the good kind. It feels like the author wanted to make the final arc be this huge grand epic finale, but he didn't want it to just be a fight between everyone and Poopy Butthole. So instead, he wrote this out of his ass to make things seem more over the top and bigger in scale. It's really stupid, and this is very unnecessary and dumb. It's disappointing to see this, because the last 100 or so chapters have been pretty solid in terms of writing. The author improved his storytelling, characters, fights, and even art and I enjoyed seeing the series get better and better as it went on. But sadly, the series took a bit of a nosedive here, although it still managed to be a decent final arc. Everyone obviously stops Poopy Butthole, and now the world is at peace. Three years later, the world has changed, Kyle and Blake are now seen as gods, and everyone is happy. Toka's living a peaceful life on his farm, and he has his very own harem. Yuna, Margaret, Henri, Diana, and Ethel want to fuck his brains out, although we never know if they actually do. No one will ever know! Yeah, so that's pretty annoying. I just read 200 chapters of what's technically a harem series just to not find out if the main character gets laid or not. Did he accept Yuna's feelings? Did he accept anyone else's feelings? Did he confess to anyone? Who knows? This is a harem ending, and while I'm sort of mixed on them, this one is sort of mixed for me. Obviously, everyone is happy, which is satisfying, but we don't know what the future holds for them. Will Toka actually stay with all five or potentially more girls, or will he pick one and plow her for the rest of his life? Again, I don't know, which is why this ending bothers me. It's not as bad as Kiss Exis's manga's ending, which suck, but still, honestly, its own, it's just whatever. I do like everything else about this final chapter though. We see how the world has changed and we get to see a lot of the main and side characters one last time. But as for Toka's relationship with the hot mamas, there's a lot more they could have done with this. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. It's just sort of- Okay. Anyway, that was the manga, and for the most part, it was good. Everything that was in the anime, along with its final arc, are just alright, but the rest, which is about half the manga, is really solid. It might have some shortcomings, most notably towards the end, but still, there's a good amount to like in it. And that's why I'm giving the legendary Harold Bryan's manga a 7.21 out of 10. Among Us! Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, you can leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, or even support me on Patreon. Link down below. Oh, 
Also, be sure to subscribe for my seven hour review of Heaven's Lost Property because that'll be out eventually. Eventually. <laughs>